what's going on everybody, my name's Ultra Sonic Hero and welcome to the very first episode of Ultra Critic. And today I'm going to be reviewing one of the finest Sonic games, a remake of Sonic Colors aka Sonic Colors Ultimate, the game that was released on the 7th of September. And luckily for me I was able to pre-order the game before the release date and got the chance to play it early. But the big question is, will Sonic Colors Ultimate stand out for the right reasons or the wrong reasons? Let's find out together as we experiment. Cue the title cards! Sonic Colors Ultimate the remake of the original game Sonic Colors. Sonic Colors was originally released on the 11th of November 2010, and now that the game got a remaster for the other modern consoles, some people who pre-ordered the game before the release date got to play it early and to try out the game itself. Now myself as a Sonic fan have been playing this game up to my standards to see what the quality, the style of mechanics and the presentation was like. Some of you who have played the original Sonic Colors game 10 to 11 years back, then you'd probably know how the game goes based on its capabilities and how remarkable both the cutscenes and the gameplay style was back in the day. So before I get on with the discussion, I'm going to show you a quick comparison to what the quality looks like based on the Wii and the PlayStation 4. You can tell they've done some huge changes to the gameplay's environment, and not just because how it looks in full resolution, but you can see every speck of detail. However, I do believe that the gameplay was a little bit blurry for me, but aside from the blurriness, I truly do believe that this game stands out in pure quality. So. Let's roll with it and talk about what the game is really all about, shall we? At the beginning of the game, as you Sonic fans know, obviously you're playing as the blue blur Sonic the Hedgehog and start at Tropical Resort, where you happen to stop and interact with the hint icons. Now just a heads up, if you have turned on the navigation setting in the main menu, Tails will guide you throughout the entire game, which is going to be slightly annoying in some way, but hey, at least you've got a companion to look out for you, am I right? Kinda like Navi for example. Get lost, Navi. Not forgetting that six of the worlds will have six acts and a boss fight, and another world where you will only need to complete three acts, two running stages, and a final boss. In order to unlock a playable world, you will need to complete the entire area with six acts and a boss. Do that and you can unlock Sweet Mountain and Starlight Carnival. After completing both Sweet Mountain and Starlight Carnival, you will unlock three more worlds, Planet Wisp, Aquarium Park, and Asteroid Coaster. And you will also unlock the Egg Shuttle where you can get to challenge yourself by playing all the levels throughout the entire game and as you complete an act, depending if you do extremely well or not, you will gain lives. After freeing all of the planets, you will unlock one final zone where you will need to face the final boss and finish two remaining acts. As I've already mentioned before, and it can be pretty stressful when you're trying to avoid that huge purple scary looking bad neck. Please don't kill me bro! This blue head of a hedgehog is in fact Dr. Eggman's simulator where you'll be aiming to complete every single special stage in order to obtain all seven of the Chaos Emeralds. But each stage will get harder and harder as you progress and after successfully collecting all seven of the Chaos Emeralds you will be able to enable Supersonic in the settings menu where you can speedrun as Supersonic. However, there is a downside. All of the powerful wisps will not be active if Supersonic is enabled. However, you will be able to get more boost from the normal wisps, so that's something. Now that I've finished talking about the special stages and Dr. Eggman's simulator, throughout the game you will spot a group of alien species known as wisps, which will grant you unique powers on different variety of abilities. So let me go ahead and talk it through as I show you some gameplay footage from the game. Laser can shoot in any direction you steer depending if you are in a 2D or 3D viewpoint. Drill can of course drill underground or underwater to find or discover any hidden paths or alternate routes. Jade is a new wisp where you will turn into a ghost and discover unimaginable locations, where you will do a homing attack by getting in range within a spot or a batonic nearby. The downside? It does not last long and the time is not on your side. But on the brighter side, you don't take damage which is a relief. Rocket will just shoot you up sky high and I mean super high like, well, a rocket, obviously, because it's a rocket wisp. And while you are up high in the sky, you might even encounter some spikes and incoming projectiles, so keep a note of that. 
Cube will allow you to transform the giant blue rings into blue blocks instantly in a blink of an eye. You can also destroy nearby bandits within close range as long as you react at the right time before losing all of your rings, and you can also destroy the black blocks that are glowing. Spike will allow you to run up walls and perform a similar spin dash mechanic like classic Sonic for instance. You will move insanely fast but you will exhaust your power gauge even quicker if you can knock down all the silly bandits for a game of bowling. STRIKE! Hover will allow you to fly up and down and all around. And of course, that was a song reference from Sonic Adventure Speed Highway, so my apologies. Continuing, but you can also perform a spinning maneuver if you time it just right near the rings. You'll steer yourself in a direction where it will lead you to a pathway or even a red ring, or even to the gold ring. And lastly, Frenzy is a monstrous wisp that'll transform you into a creepy looking thing which almost looks like a coronation of Sonic and Venom. Please do not ask me why, it is just a horrible abomination. Where was I? Oh yes, I was talking about Frenzy. So, it'll destroy anything in its path such as bad nicks and some fragile obstacles. Frenzy will move fast as you begin to devour everything. Do keep in mind, however, when you munch on those blocks, he will continue to grow bigger and he will start to slow down as you continue evolving into one big ugly monstrosity. And as for the normal wisps, they'll just give you some boost where you can perform a sonic boost and speed your way through bad nicks and reach higher platforms that are far away from your distance and far away from reach. Okay, so based on what I've seen and experienced while playing Sonic Colors Ultimate, I could not believe what I've just witnessed from my own eyes, and no, they do not deceive me folks. While I was playing the game, I had noticed a few glitches and bugs and I was absolutely underwhelmed and shocked to see how inconsistent the glitches and bugs were. And just a heads up everyone, the social media manager Katie for Sonic the Hedgehog has just posted two tweets. Hey everyone, I appreciate all of your feedback on Sonic Colors Ultimate and the teams are listening and assessing for an upcoming patch. Thank you all for your patience as we dig into this. And she posted a second tweet so I'll read it out as well. Quick aside, we've seen some graphical issues that were caused by an emulator which is unfortunately outside our control trying to figure out what bugs are legitimate can really slow down the QA process if you're having issues please do flag them here sega.com forward slash support now I'm assuming that they're going to fix the issues on Sonic Colors Ultimate and then re-release it again and maybe update the game. So we don't know what to expect, but if they do happen to re-release the game again but with much better improvement on the glitches and bugs, then I'll be satisfied. This is not the only downside that I had to point out. Now I've heard some of the remixes on several acts from Tropical Resort to Asteroid Coaster. Some remixes were okay, some of them were good, but unfortunately the rest of the remixes was just underwhelming and it was not good at all. I mean, no disrespect to the composer at all. No disrespect. Don't get me wrong, he's such an extremely talented guy and has shown a lot of dedication as a composer. It's just some of the remixes that sound like songs from a nightclub, they just do not work for the music for Sonic the Hedgehog at all in my opinion. I kind of wish that they just kept some of the original songs or even just recreated them but as more lively and more breathtaking for my own opinion. A remix is real okay, but again, I prefer the original soundtrack more because of what the original soundtrack truly represents. As for the ending theme of Speak With Your Heart, I did not like it at all. This was not how I imagined because ever since we've been watching Sonic Sympathy, the music was out of this world. I thought we were going to get this kind of remix into the Sonic Colors Ultimate game. They didn't bring that originality from the game into this. It didn't even sound like the one they played in the Sonic Sympathy. I would have been amazed to hear the exact song. Unfortunately, the song was just not what I had hoped for. It just it didn't quite hit that wow factor. And lastly, the cutscenes. For the love of God, they're the exact same cutscenes from the Wii system and I was extremely disappointed because I was expecting to see some huge changes to the cutscenes, like making models from scratch and making each character or environment look vibrant and incredibly detailed. I will give them bonus points for the subtitles though, they were very clear and you can see the text and it's good visual. Voice acting is fine the way it is. In case if they'd want to change or redub the entire game for better improvement, that would be acceptable and understandable. Now that brings me to my big question and my overall rating. Does Sonic Color stand out as a unique Sonic game? Eh, somewhat yes. And will I ever play it again in the future for my next walkthrough? Absolutely. Did I enjoy this game? Of course I did. I would consider it. And how would I rate Sonic Colors Ultimate out of 10? Well, despite all the glitches and the bugs that I've been having recently, and despite some of the flaws that I've seen over this game, I would have to give it a 7 out of 10.
It wasn't a perfect remake, but for what it stands, it's a good remake in my book. And that, my friends, is my review of Sonic Colors Ultimate. Thank you everybody so much for watching all the way up to the end. If you enjoyed it, make sure to smash a like, subscribe to my channel for more content, and don't forget to click on the bell to get notified on all of my uploads. And if you want to follow me on my social media, the links are going to be provided in the description below. Thanks again for watching, and as always, I will see all of you in the next video. Take care.